What's up again guys, yeah it's me, Dovahkiin, and welcome back to my Elden Ring series. And uh, before we begin, be sure to hit on the subscribe button for more great videos. Okay, before I feature the farming spot, let's do a recap on my progress and an update on my stats. After clearing Stormvale Castle back in episodes 36 and 37 against Margit the Fell Omen and the first demigod boss, Godric the Grafted respectively, the next stop is the Rhea Lucaria Academy in the Leurnia of the Lakes region. But uh, before doing so, I decimated most of the bosses at the southeastern part of the region and surrounding the academy. By the way, the name Rhea Lucaria is believed to be a Japanese to English mistranslation of Real Karya, as in Real Madrid, the football club, because in the Japanese version it's called the Magic Academy of Real Karya. Real means royal, so the proper translation should have been Royal Karya Academy. Now on my gear and stats, which is already displayed in the right panel. I'm still mostly wearing the same stuff since my last update. Back in episode 35 when I featured the Dragon Barrow 4 Guardians farming spot. Except for my weapon loadout, my helm and a second talisman slot. Now in my main hand is Roger's Rapier, which I've upgraded to plus 14. And enchanted with a Horfrost Stomp Ashes of War, that gave it a cold affinity and an int scaling of C. For a mage, using Horfrost in early game is a no-brainer. With its cone projecting AoE, it prevents you from getting ganked by multiple melee enemies. And uh, since it can apply Frostbite, follow-up hits can cause more damage. Anyway, the good thing about upgrading this rapier is that it only requires ordinary smithing stones and I can save up my somber ones for another sword which uh, I'm not gonna spoil just yet and of course a staff. The Creepus's black key crossbow which you can get in a room in the round table hold requiring a stone sword key is just a replacement for my ordinary utility longbow and uh, later on today's farming feature having a ranged weapon is gonna be essential. As per the claw mark seal, it's another utility, so I can cast the Flame Cleanse Me Incantation, which cures poison and scarlet rot, and the reason that I have 12 points on faith. And uh, this spell was just absolutely vital back in episode 39 when I ventured into the abandoned cave in Kaelid to defeat a pair of bosses to get the Gold Scarab. By the way, I still use the Inverted Hawk Heater Shield in difficult boss battles. And of course, the Meteorite Staff goes to the main hand during those times. Now on the Olivenous Glintstone Crown. As I've said, I haven't cleared Rhea Lucaria yet. And uh, this is one of those helms you can get there without killing any bosses. It adds 3 to your int, but uh, penalizes your HP by 10%, but uh, that's fine because uh, this is just temporary. Once I clear the academy, I can choose from a plethora of better helms. And uh, finally, on the Earth Tree's favor, which I got back in episode 24 in the French Folk Hero's Grave. There are upgraded versions of this later in the game. But uh, this basic one adds 3% to HP, 6.75% to stamina, and 5% to equip load. By the way, I forgot to mention this in my last update. As for my Physic Mix, I'm using the Green Spill Crystal tier that gives 15% max stamina for 3 minutes, which I got from the Minor Earth Tree in Limgrave and the Opaline Bubble Tier, which increases damage negation by 90% for the same amount of time. 
which uh, I got after defeating the Earth Tree Avatar back in episode 16 at the Weeping Peninsula. Now on stats. And yes, I'm already level 124, and I'm still wearing Radagon's Sword Seal. So my Vigor, Endurance, Strength and Dex are still boosted by 5 points. And uh, as per Dex, I've capped it on 17, cause uh, that's the minimum requirement of Roger's Rapier, and the Mystery Sword that I mentioned earlier. On Int, I just hit 70. But uh, for now, I'm building up my Vigor and Mind. And uh, once I reach my uh, targeted values, I'll focus back on it. Okay, before we discuss today's farming spot, as a recap, these are the per minute rates of the previous ones that I've featured, and their suggested level ranges. Alright, getting to this new farming spot requires doing a part of an NPC's questline, White Mask Varus. The first guy you'll meet after emerging out of the game's tutorial area. The one who refers to you as Maidenless. After acquiring your first great rune, ideally by defeating Godric the Grafted, the first demigod boss, and uh, talking to Enya for the first time in the round table hold, he will move to the Rose Church, just south of the Ray Lucaria Academy. Talk to him there and he will ask you on what you think about the two fingers. Just say they didn't seem right and uh, he'll give you five festering bloody fingers which is used to invade other players. So uh, go online if you aren't already and uh, do at least three invasions. You don't have to uh, win or anything and can uh, practically just jump off a cliff if you want to. Then return to Vare and get anointed. He will then give you a cloth item, the Lord of Blood's favor, which uh, you must die with the blood of a maiden. A dead maiden can be found in the Church of Inhibition, at the northeastern part of Liurnia. But uh, be careful on your approach, because uh, you'll be facing an NPC invader there, festering fingerprint Vike which I featured back in episode 38. Also, you'll get the Finger Maiden armor set from the dead girl. Now, after dyeing the cloth, return to Vare. He'll then cut one of your fingers and uh, give it back to you as an item, the Bloody Finger, which allows you to do unlimited invasions. But uh, most importantly, you'll get the Pure Blood Knight's medal which uh, if used will teleport you to the Mogwin Palace underground region. Once you're there, activate the nearby Side of Grace. Then just beeline your way up to the Palace Approach Ledge Road Bonfire. This is a late game region, so uh, if like me, you're just fresh out of the Godric fight, which is uh, still in early game, avoid the mobs, cause uh, they will absolutely decimate you. On a side note, this isn't the only farming spot in this region, but it is the legit one. The other involves exploiting a glitch in the game by jumping into an endless chasm and earning hundreds of thousands of runes while falling. But I'm not gonna feature that cause uh, that's beyond game mechanics. Similar glitches have been patched over time, so obviously they weren't part of the design, but uh, the one that I'm going to feature remains intact over the patches, which means that it is well within the intentions of the devs. Okay, for this one, you will need a ranged weapon, a bow or crossbow or whatever, and lots of ammo. And uh, it involves shooting a giant blistered crow down below, but uh, before I start the timer, Take note that I'm not using anything that will affect rune acquisition, to show the baseline and to be consistent with my previous farming features. By the way, a run takes less than a minute, so uh, I will do two runs, 
and compute the per minute rate based on that data. Alright, let's begin. Okay, each run gives 11,038 runes. We had two runs in 42 seconds. So, that's 31,537 runes per minute. Which uh, equates to 1.892 plus million runes per hour. Which is uh, undoubtedly the best farming spot in early game. Now, in case you haven't noticed, I titled this vid Mogwin Palace Farming 1, which means that there is a second part. And this mob is the part 2. It's just that, as I've said, I'm still in early game. So I don't have any powerful AoE sorceries to use against them just yet. Anyway, in the next episode, I will begin my conquest of Rayo Lucario Academy. So, stay tuned in. And that is all there is for now. Thanks for watching. Also, check out other videos from Sabbath Man Philippines and don't forget to subscribe. See you on my next bit. Peace out, yo.